everybody, I'm here at the hangar, so let's chat. Today, I wanted to take a closer look at the next aircraft in our fleet, the Weatherly 620B. Our Weatherly was built in 1993. It's powered by a nine-cylinder Pratt & Whitney R985 engine that makes 450 horsepower. It has a three-blade Hartzell constant speed propeller. There were many models of Weatherly's built over the years. The 620B was their most recent model. Let's go take a walk around the airplane. So let's start here at the engine. Like I said, it's a Pratt & Whitney R985 engine. The propeller is that three-blade constant speed Hartzell propeller. Coming around the left side of the airplane, we've got our left main wheel and tire. That little piece of metal in front of the gear leg is actually a wire cutter for this airplane. Underneath the wing of the airplane, you'll see our booms and nozzles attached. On the wing, you have your fuel filler cap. You would fill the fuel in the left tank on this side, and there's another cap on the right side where you would fill your fuel as well. The 620B does carry quite a bit of fuel. I believe this airplane holds around 95 gallons of fuel. Different models of Weatherly's have different fuel systems, but the interesting thing about the 620B is that it has an interconnected fuel tank on the left-hand side. It's important that you fuel the Weatherly properly. You have to allow for sufficient time to pass to top off the left tank as it's feeding itself into that center tank. One thing you might notice missing on the wing are flaps. This airplane does not have any flaps. In front of the cockpit, you have your fiberglass hopper and hopper lid. This airplane, I believe, has a 330 gallon hopper. In front of the hopper, you have your light bar, which connects to the GPS inside the cockpit. In front of the light bar, you have your oil door. This airplane holds just under seven gallons of oil. You also have a wire cutter in front of the windshield of the Weatherly in addition to the wire cutter on each main landing gear. Taking a look inside the airplane here, we've got tachometer, manifold pressure, oil pressure and temperature, your boom pressure gauge up here. This right here is our GPS that connects to the light bar on the front of the airplane there. Fuel gauges, airspeed indicator, altimeter. You've got your radio stack and transponder down here. Got our fuel selector gauge on the left here. Throttle prop mixture right here. This is your spray handle and this is your dump handle. You do have these clear sky view panels up top which give you a lot better visibility when you're working a field. You have a hopper quantity gauge that is a float type gauge. You also have a visual indicator to see what's in your hopper as well as markings on the side. Taking a look at the tail section, the Weatherly does have a locking tail wheel. For those of you who don't know, larger tail wheel aircraft will often have a lock that keeps them tracking straight on both takeoff and landing. Let's take a closer look at the tail wheel lock. So you have your tail wheel and the tail wheel is able to swivel around freely. Right here you have a pin and on this plate you have a small hole. When the tail wheel is lined up and the aircraft is tracking straight, the pin and the hole are lined up together. To lock the tail wheel, you would simply pull the stick all the way back, which allows the pin to drop into the hole. Locking the tail wheel helps us track straight, especially when the aircraft is heavily loaded. To unlock the pin, you would simply push the stick all the way forward, which would pull the pin out of the hole and allow the tail wheel to swivel freely again. We keep the tail wheel unlocked when we're maneuvering on the ground, such as getting the aircraft positioned for a load. Not all tailwheel locks are controlled by the stick, but the Weatherly and a couple of our air tractors have that type of lock. Again, there is another door on the right-hand side, so you could enter or exit from the left or the right side of the airplane. On the right wing, we have our right fuel tank filler cap. Again, the Weatherly has no flaps, so on the wing, you'll only see your ailerons. As we get back to where we started, we can take a little bit of a closer look at the spray system. You can see the booms under each wing connect underneath the center of the airplane. There's plumbing run from the booms all the way into both sides of the hopper and then through the spray pump and pump fan. Our Weatherly is equipped with flow control. 
For those of you who don't know, flow control is something that allows us to set the desired rate of application no matter what speed we're moving across the field. For example, let's say we wanted to apply a product at five gallons per acre. We would put the desired rate into our GPS, which is inside the airplane, and then go spray the field. With flow control, no matter what speed you're moving across the field, the rate of application will stay the same. The system is also equipped with a manual override should the flow control fail. It's a bit more complicated than that in real life, but that is the basic principle of how flow control works. And that brings us right back to where we started. In the beginning of my ag career, I started in the Piper Pawnee. After the Pawnee, I moved into the Weatherly, and this is one of the Weatherlies that I have quite a bit of time in. I got to know this airplane really, really well. The Weatherly is a great agricultural aircraft trainer. It's a great step after the Pawnee where you're going just a little bit faster. It's still slow enough that it allows us to get into smaller fields, but it also has a larger hopper, which allows us to do more work at one time. The systems in the Weatherly are a little bit more complex from the Pawnee, which also makes it a great jump. The Weatherly is a really enjoyable airframe to fly and working a radial engine such as the 985 really teaches you a lot about how to respect an engine while you're flying. An interesting design feature on the 620B is that it's a half monocoque frame. Earlier Weatherlies were built as a steel tube fuselage and frame, while the 620B is actually a steel tube fuselage until just behind the cockpit and then it switches to a monocoque design. To put that simply, the front half of the airplane is built very similar to a race car or other ag planes that are currently being built today, while the back half of the airplane is built more like what you would see on a 172. We've owned a lot of different weatherlies over the year and it has been interesting to see the pros and cons of each of those different designs. Now that we've completed our walk around, our tour of the weatherly is almost complete. As always, no tour would be complete without a few shots of the airplane in action. That's going to wrap up our tour of the Weatherly 620B. It's a very unique and enjoyable agricultural plane to fly. If you have any questions, please comment down below and I'm happy to get to them. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, thank you all so much for being here and I'll see you next time.